Hey guys, we're back again with another episode of Far Kingdoms. Mm, episode 14. 14. We're actually recording this the same day, or technically the same day. Within hours. Uh, of the last session that we just had. So it's all fresh. It's, it's pretty fresh. Fresh meat. We normally record this the next day. but or The day after, yeah. Um, I'm going to be pretty busy over the next couple of days, so it's going to be pretty difficult to record, yeah. so we're doing it now. I mean, this one might be a short one anyway, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be a pretty short one. Um, although I did write a lot in the recap, surprisingly. You because... speak so much, but you say nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all content. That's all content. All right, let's 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 get it into gear. It's all your content. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, um, when we left off last session, Ty was about to tell us her revised plan, and then she gets interrupted by the Uvanian agents outside, calling up Ryan, holding up Strongjaw's ear. How convenient. How convenient. So, huh? huh? How convenient, huh? You think there's maybe a no? I'm fucking with you. Um. I don't know, it was just something that happened. Ryan's like, I'm gonna kill these people. Snow's like, I'm not gonna kill these people, I'm gonna escape through the sewer. No, I... No, well, what my intention was by doing that is I thought this was an ambush. It seemed like an ambush, hmm. right? Like, he was getting baited to Valid come fight them, yeah. but it wasn't, so... So Snow wanted to see if there was a back way, to see if there was any more enemies hiding outside the tavern. Uh, I think Maple came with him as well, and Ty was leading them through the sewers. Um, they led through the cellar door that was in the back room, which, which came up in a previous session. Continuity. And, um, yeah, this, this, the sewers branched off to other areas we didn't have time to look at, but clearly there's some underground shit going on there, some yeah. secret base or whatever. There's like the Thieves Guild in Skyrim or something like that. Yeah, there might be a connection later on and how you guys use that. Yeah, or yeah. Something well, else. that's going to be something. That's going to be something. Oh, so... Okay. Ryan goes out, he fucks up one of the dudes, three three bolts to the face, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, the dude holding the ear, that is. And then he just beats the crap out of the second guy. And he just gets him in a stranglehold, fucking Darth Vader stranglehold. Yeah, and like puts him in a sleeper hold, and he's asleep. He's asleep. Ah, go to sleep. Uh, meanwhile, the other party coming out of the sewer, obviously, <clears throat> it's all clear, all good there. Yeah. Uh, so they reconvene. Yeah, they witness Tokel dragging a body out. Yep. As he does, and he's like the corpse man. Someone needs to move across. I mean, he's the, the only him. he's the only one on the party that actually has some muscle on him. He, he he does have the highest strength, right? By a lot. Yes, by a lot. Everyone else is like eight. Is it wait? Does Oasis have? I mean, she more can turn eight? into something and then have more than eight. No, but I don't. I'm talking about I'm talking about her. No, I don't think so. Form. I think she has ten or maybe eight. Hmm. Anyway, he does that. You guys reconvene. You have this discussion, right? Do we do we go there right now and try to save Strongjaw's ass? And I really thought they'd be more um, pushback against just going there, just just go. Like, they'd, mm. they'd be like, we need to do some planning, or we need to take a rest, or something. Also, the, the, the guy before Ryan beat him up told him where Strong Draw yeah. is. Yeah, Warehouse 2. Yeah. Warehouse 2. You well, thought there'd be more pushback? Yeah, you guys were pretty fucked up. Like, um, Maple Hon was almost out of spells. Honestly, I forgot. I forgot. Oh, you <laughs> fools. I forgot. Tokel was out of his healing pool. Ryan... Uh, actually, I don't know what Ryan was out of. Wait, did he use action surge on the no. drone? Oh, yeah, he did. Oh. He did. Does, no, actually, I think he had more than one action surge at that point. Anyway, um, the good news was that Oasis returns. She's, she's great back. return of Oasis. Oh, yeah. And she's... she is full health, full spell slots. She's ready to fuck some dudes up. Yeah, she went someplace and didn't say where It'll she went. It'll be explained in a later session. <laughs> sure. Um, she goes, she comes back. She's like, I don't know what's happening, but let's let's, let's get it. Yep, we go, to, we go to save the deadweight NPC. Hey, even even Ty is like, this is a pretty bad idea. If these are the same Ubanians that I've heard about, this is a pretty bad idea. You're just walking straight into the trap. I'm surprised that none of you actually died. Or at least, some of you got pretty close to death. Yeah, it was pretty serious. It was yeah. a pretty serious fight. Yeah, it, did get it, it made the white dragon fight just seem like a cakewalk, honestly. Pretty much. I mean, this is, this is a continuation of the white dragon fight. So in my head canon, these people would never show themselves mm. unless they were pretty confident they could fuck you guys up. Yeah. And seeing that you both went, well, all of you went through some kind of arena battle, mm. they were just like, all right, we can handle it. Yeah, they already to be fair, up. they almost kind yeah. of handled yeah, it. Yeah, they did. They almost did. They, they almost, almost did. kind of handled it. 
I mean, uh, Mabel got some really good, really good whole person. Yeah, whole person helped a lot. Oh, right, I, yeah, right, if, right, if, right. if he we'll get, if, to it. We'll get to it. if he hadn't have done that, you know, well, I mean, oh yeah, there's there's a bit of dialogue. We can talk about the combat just real quick. Yeah. So there's some dialogue beforehand, but we'll just get into the combat since we're already talking about it. Yeah, Mabel pulled off a double whole person mm. level four counter spell well, and then counter spell re counter spell. Oh, that's so sick. Um, for those of you who think that that's two spells in the same round we kind of reactions kind of like a weird place yeah we'll have to do some fact checking in the round order because they they can technically activate outside of your turn yeah so but even though they do require an action to prep so i don't know it's weird they're weird yeah but this is like an instant action yeah instant reaction. these are things we just have to deal with straight away We'll just say it's this for now. We'll check later. It's yeah. just one of those things, and we will eventually. So yeah, that ended up. So that whole person led to one of the assassins getting obliterated by Storm, yep. who's absent this week. Um, NPC Storm obliterating with his with his crit Ten animated daggers, knives. One hundred and something damage. One hundred and six damage. One hundred and six. One hundred and three damage. Something like that's that. Some that's crit. Disgusting. Yeah. One shot that one that one assassin, so he's dead. Um, and then yeah. Basically, Maple gets fucked up by one of the assassins who mm. jumps on top of him because initially it was an ambush, right? So it was. So now jumping back to when we jump, Ooh, go to the, the where, warehouse, we scope out the place. There's no windows, there's no openings anywhere, it's just the front door. Yeah, like so, a warehouse. Um, the initial plan was for Ryan to go in, guns blazing, and then the rest of the party would like come in and sneak, like go for a flank or something like that. But no, they get stuck into a conversation because Ryan recognizes one of the one of the Ubanians to be an old teammate or an yes, old war buddy. An old teammate. Something like that. His name was Lieutenant Cargan. 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 At this point he's no longer a lieutenant. He would have been a captain or something. So okay. eleven years ago he would have, he was a lieutenant, yeah. Right, right. And you, what Ryan would have been like in his late twenties then? Oh, I don't I'm not too sure about the ages, honestly. But Ryan back then was also a captain, so I think he was ranked higher. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. And this guy is out for blood. He doesn't... He doesn't like Ryan really that much, yeah. but he has orders to bring Ryan back, so yeah. there's nothing he can really do. He lets off a few bombshells, like, oh, yeah, remember all those villages we went to? And you're like, we're not going to kill innocent people. Yeah. Well, I went back anyway, and I killed all the innocent people. It felt, it felt like... It gave me, like, a Vietnam War movie vibe. Oh, like, <laughs> like it. You know, some, like, American soldiers talking about, like, some fucked up shit they did in a village or something like that. Yeah. It felt like that. Yeah. Anyway, this guy's not a good guy. Yeah. He's a pretty, he's a, he's a bit of an asshole. He's got strong draw in, in this, in this clamp, in this forced choke, not really forced choke, just choke yeah. position. Similar to how Ryan had that, that Ubanian soldier in a choke, Ooh, which contrast, nice, huh? Juxtaposition. Nice. Huh? I feel like it's a, it's a it's comparison. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> anyway, um... And this guy is just talking to Ryan. He's talking about the, the good old days or how Ryan is hanging out with these beasts, these animals. They're, they're not human. They're, yeah, they're sub, subhuman. They're not worth anything. They're That's garbage. Typical Ubanian worldview. They're just slaves to us. All they are is manpower. Mm. Hell yeah. I love I love playing like that. Um, the, you, Ryan's like... You mentioned that... I think Cargan mentioned that slaves fight in the wars as well. Was yeah, that, I think, well, he just kind of said they died for us. Oh, okay. So, uh, oh, you, okay. Can, you can assume it's kind of fighting, but you can also say it's like, oh, they just kind of die in the fields for us. Oh, yeah, think. okay. Um, but yeah, he is he is the typical Ubanian army person. Yeah, yeah. Very racist, very um, narrow-minded, arrogant. And believes full-heartedly in uh, Emperor Kristoff. God, Emperor Kristoff. May his name be sacred and then ryan talks shit about emperor christoph mm, and then there, there was like oh that's, that's almost that's treason. Treason. you can't do that you can't do that that's a big no-no that's fucked up that's that's the one worst thing i love i love the ubanian narrative it's just so clear and dry but then like if you look past the surface it just gets so messy all yeah. this shit everything that they looks do. so fucked up like the stuff behind christoph you know the shit that they do behind the scenes the slavery um all this like they probably have a lot of like in-house fighting and shit like that mm. uh, it's just there's so much to pick through when you think about it yeah that's why I'm looking forward to that three shot Aiden oh yeah he's planning to do three a three shot. shot and what he told told us was pretty ambitious yeah he's thinking of doing 
Um, so everyone, all, all the party members are going to have their own squad. And what's going to happen is they're going to have like little side stories mm-hmm. within, like mm-hmm. a one shot within the one shot, where each player squad, each other player plays the whatever play. Oh, how do I explain this without plays the like squad more... members? One play, one player plays the squad captain. And yeah, that's the player they'll use for pretty much. The... And then the other players play yeah. the squad members, and are... then it switches to the other. That person. sounds so sick. That yeah. sounds and so then the final sick. Final episode is all the squad captains. Oh, Ooh. oh, that'll be sick. That'll be sick. That I'm, sounds I'm badass. That. I'm sounds... really gonna enjoy that. Um, sounds yeah. ambitious as fun. I hope he manages to pull that. I off. think he will. He's. I think he's got really good potential as DM. He's got great DM potential. I think most people do actually. Uh, anyway, that that's some crazy shit. He's like, no. Ryan's like, no. I I, I love the people. The people are good. These mm. are good people. They're not animals. They're friends. Yeah, and <laughs> I think they were, they had a lot of history, like even back then, of getting into disagreements about yeah. morals and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, apparently Ryan butted heads with this guy in particular, and it's like this is the whole reason why we got into so many fights back then. It was just exactly that that yeah. type of thinking. The typical Ubanian, closed-minded, narrow-mindedness. How dare you! One-track mind type deal, and I, I really like that. It really, for those who don't are not familiar with Ubanian thinking, that's like just listening to that conversation. You get a lot of insight into mm. how they think and stuff like that. Yeah, man. I th- there was this one quote I really wanted to use, but I completely skipped over it because um, at some point <clears throat> Ryan had this breakup with the the Night Watch, and he was sent away to do some administrative duty. Blah blah blah. And I really wanted um, Cargan mm. to. Um, there was this line I wanted to use. You know, the, you know the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. I wanted him to say the straw that broke the servant's back. That would have been that would have been so sick. That would have been a sick line, man. That'd be. That'd be oh, I loved. Ah, oh, shit. Anyway, maybe someone else will use it. You just forgot about that. Yeah, it was it was in the notes in like a little corner that you should say this. It's a sick line. Anyway, <laughs> um, they get really mad at each other, and then they start fighting. And then, as it comes back to Allmate's turn, he snaps the neck of Little Strongjaw. Yeah. I think Snow tried his hardest to save him, even though Panache. He's a, yeah, I know. He's a deadweight character. How but, dare you? Yeah, but yeah, when I read Panache, I was like, oh, I just see if it works. Just see if it works, because it, basically it's just like a taunt. Yeah. And he gets disadvantaged on attack, but it doesn't. It's not like. Disarm. You drop your weapons or it's whatever. Not, yeah, it's not yeah. like disarm or anything like that. So yeah, it didn't really work. So strong door ended up dying. Um, and the fight breaks out <clears throat> after Maple going down, Ryan going down, Turkle nearly getting close to going to down. Health. Um, we we win by the skin of our teeth. Mm, what, by the skin of our teeth. Overall, was that a good fight? Yeah, it's pretty intense. Pretty intense. Pretty intense. So like the threat of death is always there, kind of intense. Yeah. It's definitely like <clears throat> it messed me up because I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta kill this guy that's fucking up Maple and Tokel because he's he's fucking them up, right? But also, Ryan and Storm and Oasis are fighting two other dudes yeah, there. So who do you help, huh? And I was like, <clears throat> when the uh, the second assassin got low, I was like, oh fuck, do I just kill him, or do I kill him, or do I try and Ooh. do more damage on the the other guy? Um, which which makes the fight intense because yeah, it's like you gotta make decisions at stake stuff. right now yeah so I was like less enemies is better kill the assassin and then good point assassin did the most damage do the thing it's it's really difficult to get battles like that because the amount of times the amount the interval between when we get long rests is usually pretty short yeah so most fights you go into you're going to absolutely fresh yeah so you can you can blow away literally everything yeah. on the fight and it's just usually it's just a piece of cake but fights like this, where you've been through quite a bit in the day, it's it's like oh shit, I'm out of spells. Like what what what, what do I do? And it's it's I think it's moments like that that really make the battles interesting. Mm. And it's difficult. It's just kind of difficult to get to that point, right? I mean, you could have like there's also like you could set an expectation as well. Like you know, going through a dungeon. This like there's probably going to be a lot of enemies, so you're mm. probably not going to rest for a while. So yeah. then, like you introduce, like okay, may- maybe we should be a bit more conservative with how we use our resources and things like that, which players should be doing all the time. But obviously, the way our party goes, we haven't really had something like that in a while. We We've just been just been like, yeah. it's just been one-off fights every now and then, 
and we kind of blow through them. So we're doing a dungeon delve next. Oh man, I really want to do that. Do a dungeon, classic dungeon. Yeah, delve? classic dungeon <clears throat> crawl. Why? Why? Why does a classic dungeon delve? I don't know. It, it's just something we've never done before. It seems like the classic D and D experience. We've right? done it before. Where where you like sleep the night in a dungeon? Oh, in I a dungeon. So, yeah, right? we did. The, the, the zombie beholder. That was a dungeon, right? That was slept. That was a short rest. It's pretty close. I mean, like like a like a day like more than days long expedition. Like a trick in a dungeon. Yeah, like maybe like into the underdark or something. That'd be fun. Ooh, like another dimension. Ooh. That'd be that sound cool. We haven't, underdark is we just kind of underground. We right? haven't done any extra planar stuff. Ooh, maybe maybe later on. I don't know. Depends how things go. Um. Yeah, the combat ends. You're all pretty fucked up. Yeah. Tokel so, does the little salt bay. Yeah. Diamond I mean, dust. Man, if it weren't for him, we'd be fucked. Yeah, so. he's the hero now, huh? Yeah. Although, you gotta remember your mace does 3d6 damage, man. You gotta remember that shit. <laughs> you, you can't forget that important oh, shit, bro. I, I just want to think about how dramatic it could have been if someone else died and he only had one revivify left. Mm. Oh, that would have been so sick from like a narrative standpoint. Bro. Damn, it was it... almost <sighs> like that. It I wish, almost... I wish you guys fucked up your saving throws, man. <laughs> Gee, that would have been sick. Like, if it would, imagine if like Brian died, and he had to choose between Brian and Strongjaw. Because either option, he's fucked. He picks up Brian. Ryan's gonna be like, why didn't you get Strongjaw? He picks up Strongjaw. Strongjaw's gonna be like, why didn't you get Ryan? That's 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 fucking that's good. Mm. That's good narrative. Easy decision for me, but yeah, that'd be spicy. <laughs> yeah, but it's not you. It's so cool. Oh, that would have been so good. That would be crazy yeah. spicy. Yeah. Oh man, and I think Aiden would have been okay with it too if his, if he actually died there. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's something to think about maybe later on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> all those diamonds that don't mean yeah. shit if you don't have third level spell slots, huh? Yeah, and paladins can only do so much. They can only do so much. Mm. I mean, he Toko was struggling there to keep everyone up. Yeah, struggling to. He's especially since he used he blew all his um. Lay on hands, pull on that on the previous dragon fight. It's actually so. It's actually so bad because he's also the tank as well as the healer. Yeah. So he and, he, and he's the healer. And he does. And he's supposed to be doing damage. Like as well. paladins, paladins shouldn't. That shouldn't be their role to heal. Like they do that as an off roll. Yeah. And you leave that to the clerics. I mean, healing in battle usually pretty sucks anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, Maybe I mean, they they needed them. to be that way to be balanced. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think he did really well this session. Yeah. I think everyone did really everyone, well this yeah. session. From both a roleplay standpoint and combat standpoint, yeah. uh, there was a few shaky bits like how spells work, and just kind of flipping through the spell book and deciding where things are and attacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did kind of slow it down a little bit, but I honestly didn't mind that much. How long was that combat? Oh, I didn't. I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, maybe less. So maybe actually, like an hour. We actually didn't have that much session before or after. Yeah, that's like, what I said. Play. It's pretty short. It didn't feel like that though. Yeah. Last session, okay, we had a fair bit, but it felt short. I don't know. Maybe the context made it seem. This session we didn't have that much, but it felt long. It felt longer, definitely. Okay. It felt longer than the last it's one. It's that intensity. It's that fear of death. I think. I think it's because that fight had so much context and and like stake in it mm. that made it feel a lot more engaging than just oh we're in, a dragon. We're in an arena or whatever yeah. fight this guy I mean you guys are going to arena tomorrow I mean uh, there's, there's stakes there you know I don't know I'm about to put a stake in that lady sorry of bitches tit you kill call, her you calling her a vampire yeah but it'd kill her if she was a normal mortal as well <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> okay so moving on the party ends up burning down the warehouse. Ryan swaps his identification ring. A little bit Ooh, of lore yeah, we made up trying, on the sport. He's trying to fake his death. That was a, that was a death. cool thing when he said when he mentioned that. I was like, oh man, that's cool. I didn't even think of that. That was really cool. Um and yeah, they end up burning down the warehouse with the bodies in it and the rings in it. And Ryan takes one of the assassin's ring. Now you got to write up some lore about who that assassin was. Yeah, and how why he's not contacting them back. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Who his family is, who his brother is, blah 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 blah. Yeah, turns out he's a good guy. Oh, no, go, we're, not, we're not gonna do that. You go back home and yeah, you realize all these guys had families and shit. That'd be good. That'd be a good thing. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely like a mood dragger, you know. It'd be like, oh shit, Are we the bad guys. I mean, no, but, yeah, cool. it's like that's, that's battle, whatever. Helps your world be a bit more three realistic. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't think Nightwatch have families. Oh yeah, so yeah, don't they have to like renounce their families or something like? Or they have to renounce? Usually, they who just they don't are. have families. Like, have, like they're usually orphans or something. So they usually don't even start with families. And by the time they're indoctrinated into the whole Ubanian Night Watch, they don't really care much for starting a family or settling right, down yeah. or anything. They just focus on their mission and solely on their mission. Mm. I mean, some are a little weird. Some are a little fucked up. Like Cargan, he was. It was a little bit messed up in the head. But, I mean, you, you know. would be if you didn't really have, like, that sort of familiar yeah, like, infrastructure. Like an anchor. Yeah. Well, that's the Night Watch, baby. Yeah, I really liked how those those guys just fought until the end. Like, none of them... Gave up? Gave up. God, no, all. they would fuck that. They were, like, all machines. I yeah. feel like that, that fit perfectly with how Ubanians would fight in real life. Yeah. Like, they remind me of the... Death. death Krieg in Warhammer. There's, like, these, there's, like, these humans, right... They don't give a fuck. They're like future Nazis, like right? Berserkers. And they're just like, they just fucking throw themselves at anything. Uh, and they just keep throwing themselves at anything until they run Jesus. them over. Just for sheer tenacity. Fucked up mentality. Anyway, uh, so we win. We go back to the drunken drunk and all beat up. Um, and then Maple and Snow sit down at the bar while Ryan, Tokel, Storm, and Oasis go up to uh, deal with the Ubanian captive and they have a little discussion on whether or not he should die. Pretty obvious he should. I mean, but Toko was really struggling with his own ideal that Good ev- role play. Ev- everyone should have a second chance. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. It's, I feel like his integrity didn't... Like, that ideal didn't hold up. He clearly was prioritizing the party's safety over this guy's. He did life. ask. He did investigate the guy. See yeah, not anything. from a lack of trying, but still, yeah. like, yeah, the choice had to be yeah. made. And he saw that there. Well, he made the decision that there's no chance for redemption for this mm. man. He is stone cold. Going to go tell the empire whatever happened. So yeah, stronger was like, no, nope, I'll take it. Yeah, stab, stab straight into Kill the neck. Kill the guy. Kill the guy. I mean, you have that conversation with Maple, right? The olive, the olive conversation. Yeah, so Snow brings up the letter that Maple received. And for context, in case you don't remember, the day earlier that day, it was earlier that day, um, the party went to the post office, picked up some mail. Only Snow and Maple received letters. Now, we spoke about Snow's letter last week, but Maple didn't really divulge what his letter was about. He wrote the letter, he sent a message off somewhere, and he seemed quite distressed, and he was just like, I need to get some rage out of my system. Mm. And we, they go to the, the blood rink, and we have those fights. So basically, he Maple tells Snow that um, the letter said his sister died. His sister Olive is dead. Don't try and go looking for her. And yeah, obviously, he's really stressed out about that one. And Snow's like, yeah, I don't know. That seems hard to believe seems hard to believe now i don't actually know this character as a player so i'm just kind of like i'm just kind of just like putting improv bits here and there like so it's at least familiar with her um but not saying anything that would break law or anything that he's written about her already Um, i probably should ask it us the player about that just so snow is more informed i'm more informed and yeah they're like okay well we need to uh, we need to go to Ernest, that old dude at the spell shop, and tell him about this. And also organize teleportation circles. We're getting to that Ooh. point now. Getting to that point now. But travel doesn't mean shit. Who needs to travel? Who needs to go to the Korokin? We just teleport everywhere. Yeah, I mean, we still have to travel to the circles in the first place, yeah, though, to discover and them. discover them. But that's yeah. meta knowledge, whatever. So there's still a bit of the element of adventuring to new places and, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see like how the how the story progresses after the Cor uh not Corrigan, the um, Huria. Huria arc. That's not for a very long time, I don't think. I feel like it's not for a while. Yeah, things are coming to fruition, but it's still Okay, prediction. Oh. What, so we talk about future arcs a lot and they're like very distant. Yeah. But what how, what is your prediction on where the next arc will take place? Where or when? Where, where? Oh, where? The location. Um, I don't really think this is spoiler territory. 
But I always imagined the party going to the ancient forest next. The, the, yeah, the that's jungle. where I think yeah. they'd go. Like, it's just natural that they'd go east, west. West, yeah, west. West. So we went up. We kind of went, like, west and then up. And then we go west again. And I feel like... I feel like... And I was talking to Aiden about, like... When he was swapping the rings, I'm like, oh, you could use that ring to, like, gain access mm. to the contact or something. We're like, oh, that's at least... A long... The, the, the arc after the next one. Maybe if the one not, after If that. not, yeah, the next two, right? Yeah, because... What I imagine... This is this is just, like, a dream. This is, this is a pipe dream for me. But, like, every natural area, or every kind of, like, I guess geographically separated area, an arc takes place that also involves a character. So, mm-hmm. like, this one would be Oasis. Yeah. Next one we go to the ancient jungle would be Storm. Storm. And then yeah. we go maybe further up, we go to Ivory Vale. Do some type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like, I feel like Ivory Vale, like, we've got to do a world tour. We've got to do a circuit, yeah. right? Yeah. We've got to do a circuit. And then you go down, you go south. You go to Eubania. Eubania, and then you go and back. Then, then we go back to Denethar, or we go back to the Crescent Isles. Yeah. And that's why it's so far Denethar away. Denethar and then Crescent Isles. It's like the last, it might, might be the last stop. Maybe it'll be the next stop. I don't know. Yeah, I, think, turn out. I think that being the last stop makes sense because it's just so separate from everything else. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do right now. And yeah, it's and it's good it's good that we kind of kind of like recon the story a little bit so it's not so urgent. Urgent. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least no, not not that the story needed to be recon, but Snow's character needed to be recon. And this was just when I first wrote Snow. I just wrote him like, oh, he's just some samurai edgy dude who died, <laughs> came back to classic. life. Classic. Maxim, like, classic edgy dude. And he was edgy in character. And, you know, I realized after we took the hiatus from Axia last year, um, I was like, yeah, that... It's not, it's not fun for people to vibe with that sort of thing. So I was like, oh, he's got to have, like, a soft reboot, I think. Yeah. So I rewrote some shit, and I I started playing him. He's still he's still a little bit edgy, but he's he's a bit more personable now with the other characters. So you and, like him way more now than before? Yeah, definitely, definitely. He's a lot more likable now, which in turns makes makes him more fun to play because yeah. you know, the characters don't. You can just kind of role play more. Yeah, but I still he's still a hard ass, you know, a little bit. Yeah, here and there. Yeah, he's he's got some thorns to him. Yeah. I mean, he also had a bit of backstory revealed with the thing. I mean, you told Maple about the 200-year gap. Yes, yeah, so that store... Uh, I keep getting the mixed up. That Snows had, may not have been dead for the last 200 years. So that's that's a plot thread that we have to unravel later. But we spoke about that last session, so yeah. we don't have to get into that yeah. right now. Um, so then, moving on... After they kill the Eubanian, they all, you know, clean up and, you know, fucking, they wrap him up in a fucking bedroll sushi of the Eubanian. Bit. And those tires like, oh, jeez, what did, what did you guys do this time? Yeah. And they're just like, oh, we just need new sheets, you know, just we need new sheets. New sheets. I mean, the, the patrons don't really care anymore about yeah. the ongoings of the party. It's just normal to them. It's a, it's a nice little fami- familiarity thing. It's a little sanctuary we got here. Yeah. Some people who... Well, maybe not like you, but tolerate you more yeah. than everyone else in the city. I think Ty is a... What do, you, what do you think about Ty? She is the most hospitable and the probably the most likable prime there is. Yeah. That we know. And you haven't even seen all her skill set yet. Like, why, yeah. why is she a prime? I mean, she clearly doesn't, like, look down on the party, one. I mean, she gets... She tolerates their shenanigans, but she clearly is just like... Oh, these people are beneath me. I don't know, what what can I do to squeeze out <laughs> anything from them? Which is which is the vibe you get from most of the other ones. Just like you know, what can I get out of this? Yeah, right? How can I use these people? And she's she it she does have an element of that as a prime because she's like oh, you know I need you guys for a job blah blah blah. Yeah. But she seems like if we do this favor her, she'll be fair to us back. Yeah, you know, and and like yeah, she seems to like she doesn't hate us as well no definitely she not. seems very nice she's she's kind of like the polar opposite of like lady sario right yeah she, yeah the, <laughs> there's something you get so she's still hot though yeah she oh she's still hot though ah oh, man like lady sario was supposed to be hot the other ones like creed and ty the maybe attractive yeah. i don't know i never wrote them with the intention of them being attractive yeah 
But like th- when you look up pictures of people online, of like characters online, they're they're just gonna be attractive. Yeah. You never find an ugly D and D like art. Just they're like the, just like passage, how he's he's fucking hot. <laughs> you, uh, well, with, no, actually, I think I roll with him with like he was supposed to be a little bit attractive. You know, pink tiefling. He's, sure, a, he's a bit of sure. a broody guy. Now he's like a joke. He's like a joke character. <laughs> I mean, he just uh, he just follows the party around like he's got nothing better to do. He hasn't like, been so... around for a while. You guys told him off. He's like, oh, fine. I'll do something else. We didn't tell him off. We just kind of didn't acknowledge his existence. Ah, it hurts. I don't, I don't know. Just, yeah, um, I don't know. I think I like her. I always... This is something I... This is like a remedy to the mistakes I made a while ago. Where most people... Like you said, most people are just kind of assholes mm. to the party. But I think now there there are at least some people who would just yeah who just need to be nice or who are just yeah. nice to the party. Um, like even Ernest, he's a, he's a bit of a hard ass, but he's yeah he's you know, um, well later on you guys visit Ernest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys deliver the news. Yeah, and he's like, ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit. All right, um, I'll I'll just let, just let me try and help yeah. out. Yeah, there's no there's no like fuck you. It's just uh. It's a bit of a depression, but I'll try and help. Yeah, and it's like, hey. and it's realistic too, like because he's got some connection with Olive, and he obviously wants to find her as well. Yeah, so he's gonna try and so help we, you guys. As we much have as a common can. goal, so yeah. it's nice for free. Anyway, that's skipping ahead a little bit. So before the party <laughs> yeah. long rests, finally, Snow comes around to Ryan's room, and he knocks on the door, and Snow is like, "This goblin's got to go. It's got to go." <laughs> How dare you! He's a liability. He's the mascot. We almost all got killed for for this guy. He's got to go. He's got to go. And so Ryan, Ryan and Snow deliberate a little bit, and like you know, should he? He's good at he's good at taking care of horses. He, maybe he can be like a stable hand, but not in the city. Snow's like not in the city. City? No, no. We can't be in the same place. So maybe he can be dropped off in Huria, and then Strongdor kind of like gives an indication that he actually wants to go and study in the college and we're like you can't even read bro <laughs> that's fuck. that's mean he's gonna go there and learn to read sure sure the smartest goblin ever um and then the commotion wakes up toku and then uh, it's just all and then everyone wakes up and it's like, all right all right group meeting sure i kind of wanted this to be like a quick and one and done thing but it me ain't. and ryan but it no of course everyone's got to get involved so we basically it's not really like basically the risk was if he was in the same city as us same area same vicinity he can be used against us easily if there's a degree of separation it would be slightly harder to do that that was snow's logic in doing that hmm. and i think they i think the party understood that but you know strong draw really wanted to go to the college and make something of himself and ryan's like you know as long as you're actually bettering yourself in some way that's fine and he's not spending all his time at the casino yeah not not gambling way oh yeah and we figured out how he got caught in the first (laughs) place he's fucking gambling in the entertainment district instead of laying low and he got got caught so we kind of gave him a talking to about that as well but he made bank he was making bank but it was decided that he would be given to uh, Nostra. Nostra Nostra which is good Nice, a nice favor we can cash in there. Nice, we got some, we got some leeway there. <laughs> got some we got friends. some leverage. We got, got some, some leverage. Friends. Finally, some fucking good leverage. Uh, and then yeah, so everyone goes to sleep. Long rest. Wake up. Party convenes. Snow kind of expresses his concerns about how little leverage we actually have in the whole city. <laughs> We're always on the back foot. I explained this last podcast. We're always owing favors, and one of these days. It's gonna tear the party apart, literally and figuratively, um, and we might just get lost in the city, right? Yeah. We might get die consumed, a terrible death, consumed in this, consumed by the city. So we're like, we need to make, we need to make a concerted effort to try and like get our foot in the door somehow, instead of getting the door slammed in our faces every single time. And so I was like, okay, sure, we'll keep that in mind, and then um, we have. We have two scenes left in the session. Turkle decides to read up on necromancers, and I think that's in regards to Sivgis. That was really cool. I didn't, I didn't expect that. I completely like blindsided me that someone would go and research. I was like, oh shit, I forgot people can do that. So there you go. So you got to write up some shit for him. I do. 
Um, and Maple and Snow decide to tell Ernest, and then we have that scene where we tell Ernest about mm. the Olive thing, and then um, finally, Ryan and, S- and Storm still absent, but NPC Storm go to the go to Nostra, and they decide to drop off. Um, this they decide to drop off Strongjaw, and basically. If you want to, if you want to recap what was discussed, ah, Nostra was very cautious mm-hmm. about accepting a new pupil until he heard that the pupil died recently and was soon revived, because Revivify is actually a necromancy spell. Mm. You know, let, let, let the people know. It's not, it's not just light and 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 fun stuff, huh? Mm. There's, some, there's some dark shadows in in the priesthood, whatever. Anyway, so he's interested now. But he's still like, well, the goblins are kind of eh at learning. Yeah. This one seems especially fucked up. <laughs> like, I don't know why he can't talk. I don't know why his ear isn't working. That should have been fixed when he got revived. There's some weird shit going on. But I think he was just generally intrigued mm. at the very unique goblin. Um, very unique specimen. Yes, and uh, Strongjaw was just kind of infatuated with a skeletal cat and the prospect yeah. of getting his own skeletal pet sure. or whatnot, so... It was, a, it was a nice little connection there, and um, finally Ryan's like, all right, um, we'll leave him in your care. And Nostra's like, but wait, one more condition. You can't come and talk to him anymore. Good. It just makes sense that if you want to keep him safe, you got to cut off all connection with him. And uh, I, that's like, is that after or before he learned that Eubanians came? In, that was after. That, that was, was after. All right. Yeah, because, I mean, he... Well, he's the vice... He's the vice principal of the yeah, college. he's pretty powerful. He's, a, he's, a pretty, he's pretty up there in power, so... Yeah. Eubanians are... They're kind of spooky, but... Not that spooky to yeah, him. Yeah, he's just, got connections. Yeah, he's, he, can, he, he can deal with whatever comes. But he says he won't promise Strongjaw safety. Mm. And Strongjaw may not even be uh, worthy of wielding necromantic power. Sure. Um, but he'll try his best. And then they have this very tearful goodbye where mm-hmm. where they, they do a little hug Ryan. God, I wish Lois was here this is this is such there was such an important session for Storm as well it's just so inconvenient he had something on yeah well it happens Ryan gives him the little crossbow bolt and Stronger was like what the fuck do I do with this well, why are you giving me this I don't have a crossbow like, well, what was the point of this he's like I got a dagger I, I'm not gonna use a crossbow bolt to protect myself but he holds on to it and they have a little hug and then I'm just gonna ask Lewis later on, like what, what Storm would have given yeah. um, Strongjaw as their parting gift, and then they walk away, and then you can see little tears coming out of Strongjaw's yeah. eyes from his back, from his back, and just dropping onto the ground, and it's like an aww moment. And then they they leave him, they leave him to to go study and become become something, make something. Man, I am so. I am so excited for the moment where you guys are in peril. <laughs> and then on an hey, undead steed goblin, goblin shows up fucking like summoning some kind of undead army that'd be funny I don't spoilers, know that's Maybe spoilers that's not spoilers that's, that's session dreams. 103 your game that's just dreams session 103 yeah after a time skip Maybe think, one day speaking of pets Oasis also wanted a pet I'm fine with it mmm Snow's against that there's a big no-no there's a big no-no the difference between a pet and a, and a liability pets can kind of take care of themselves strong door He's a bit of a... <laughs> he's less than a pet. It's, 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 he's saying he's, he's dead more, weight. He's more vulnerable than a pet. You can't just pick him up and put him on your shoulder. You can't just fly away if he's a parrot or something. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm okay with it as a player, but as a character, no way, dude. No I want to see the pet. It's no fun. way, dude. It's fun role-playing the little weird things like the pet or Strongjaw. I want to miss role-playing Strongjaw. He's just charades. <laughs> you just get to play charades. I mean, you didn't even get to play him that much. He was like, wasn't... Yeah, he, ever heavily he usually involved. wasn't involved but still when the times came it was fun trying to get people to get horses or riding things or but i think that's that's just kind of the norm for npcs that aren't super important important to the narrative or that much because i think you said a long time ago that although i might have asked you because like do you did you have like did you have a place for strong draw in the overall narrative and I, you kind of no. gave the impression that yeah, you didn't no. have that. So, it was, he was a random. He wasn't. He wasn't random, but he was an encounter on the road, right? right? Now, so I, there was like a few encounters. Like there was a slave encounter. This is when you were going from Trident to Weirdwood. This was ages ago. Mm-hmm. I had the. I just wanted to have some random encounters on the road. So I was like, 
Okay, uh, I don't know, slave encounter and yeah. you know, goblin encounter, who knows. And then they both turned out to be pretty, <laughs> really important things, more than Weedwater, I think. Um, but yeah, that those just kind of spiral out of control and just kind of have to deal with what happens. I think well, I think the slave encounter was arguably more important than Strongjaw. <laughs> like, the entirety of Strongjaw's arc just didn't they go kind, They were kind of tied together, you know? Ubanians, and then Ubanians use Strongjaw as a... Oh, he had a good climax to his arc, but uh, I don't know. It just it just felt like it kind of like only started going somewhere near the end, and then it en it ended. Hey, you don't. It's not over. It's not over. He's gonna come back one day, stronger than ever. It's over. Close gonna, the he's doors. Gonna be the hero. Close he's the gonna doors. Be the hero that Sold saves out. your people asses. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna you're all gonna die. You're gonna get a TPK and you're gonna get revived from the dead by fucking strong. <laughs> Well, you can Imagine you can that. live out your fucking Bennett fantasy that you had before. Remember that kid who died. Remember that kid who died, <laughs> and you were like, "Oh, he was gonna become the next guts or like something." Strong will revive Bennett, and then they'll be oh, oh, all the NPCs will just be one. Somehow learns true resurrection. Is it what's it called? True resurrection. I think so. Yeah. Where you can re revive someone from like any yeah, like, like a two, like like, like two hundred years or yeah. something. It's something insane like that. As long as you have like a body pod anything but that's uh, <laughs> very 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 far in the future it's a nice that's, level that's final arc crescent isles arc he comes on final in a boat arc man we're actually kind of plotting this out are we i mean but that kind of seems scary there's no guarantees that any of this will happen maybe you guys will fucking die in the next three sessions and none of this ever comes to fruition there's the possibility that, of that. No, i mean that but that does seem like a good structure for a campaign you have you have a little you have an arc not a little arc you have an a arc an arc in each place each geographical you get to explore places you get yeah. to do things you get to explore play which is really good that our characters are just from all different walks of life yeah yeah definitely definitely um yeah I think I think it's perfect really uh, it's just scary that we're like, it's kind of like we're putting a time limit now. There's like a finite. It's, it's just, it's it wasn't, just, it's wasn't, it's a pipe dream. It's not real. It's, it wasn't, it didn't feel so like open ended and infinite. It's like when you put it like oh, that, there's an end point now. So like, uh, let's, let's count it. Let's count it. So we have this arc, not counting this arc, actually the next arcs we have potentially yep. ancient forest, ancient gardens, ancient gardens, ivory veil, Eubania three. Yep. Uh, and then Crescent Isles, that's four arcs. Yeah, maybe a little bit of Danathar in there. Maybe yeah, or maybe we cross over into Danathar, but I feel like that was arc one. Yeah. That was like big arc one. And maybe there will be one more in between then for Aizen. I do have some stuff. Oh shit, yeah. Maybe we will we'll try it in action. Maybe gotta we'll come action. back, gotta come back, you gotta come back. Maybe there's a city out there that's not Ooh, Ooh. Atlantis Ooh. arc, Atlantis arc. Ooh, teaser. Mm, so five arcs, yeah. five arcs. And how long we've we been in this arc for? Oh, maybe 15, 16. No, maybe like 12, 12, 13 sessions. So Are you yeah. sure? That little? Yeah. I'm what about sure. including the, the travel arc? Oh, maybe. I'd like say that's like the start of the new arc. Yeah, like 15-ish, I guess. Plus, I mean, it's still maybe off for double that. Maybe more than that. So it's going to be a while. It's, it's going to be weird because... If we do find the Oathbreaker, which was our main reason for coming to the desert hmm. in the first place, don't we have to return somewhere with the sword? I mean, you guys want to go back and stab Hesseldane with it. Right. Man, fuck Hesseldane. I don't think I care about Oh, my that homies much. hate Hesseldane. <laughs> I don't think I care about Hesseldane that much. I kind of oh, like... Not yet, huh? Just you wait. Maybe, Maybe he'll Can be... you make him come to us and we can kill him in the <laughs> desert? <laughs> so you just end the arc there and move on? I don't know. There might be some kind of MacGuffin that you have to find in the ancient gardens next to sure, complete, sure. complete the ritual. <laughs> I don't know, but sure. um, it'll be it'll be fun. I mean, there are a lot of other places I want to explore eventually, like extra planar places, like just going to a different plane entirely. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. In, oh. in saying that, it, we have no idea if yeah. the campaign would roughly follow something yeah, like I, that. I really want to go to the Underdark at some point. <sighs> would you? Mm, like the Cthulhu I can't even I can't even imagine what the party what the party's goals would be at that point to it, it'd have them. to be some kind of ancient something something X or somebody gets captured or something along those lines did you, did you have did you intend for this elected thing to like be like the campaign arc 
Like uh, the overall thing? No. Really? They were... I just wanted a really cool government system. <laughs> and they just turn out that those are the people you need to talk to. I didn't think it would take this long to get through all the... Uh, Stuff and get past them. To Wait, get covenant to... system? Did you say government. government? Government system. Yeah, governing system. So like eleven, eleven primes who govern the whole. No, city. no, no. I'm talking about the elected, like the the, the oh, brands thing. The brands, the brands. Primes. My bad. My bad. Um. Oh yeah, definitely. That's planned. All that's planned. I mean, but it, did you plan it to be like the campaign arc? Like oh, that's going to be like, like the like end that... game. Like yeah. once once those are off, that's the end. I mean. Depends how things go, really. You guys get the oath breaker. You guys take off the oaths. That's it, right? Maybe that that plot ends there. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? It's like most of us still even haven't even made Into contact the places, with right? our. We haven't even made contact with our gods yet. Yeah. They're surprisingly being silent. So I'd like to. I'd like to explore that. Yeah. So why they're silent? I why think. I think silent? there's some other people who have been like, yeah, they're silent. They're never going to talk to you. What if we're like? Oh, what if it's like? reincarnation right we're like the reincarnated forms of these gods, oh. and then like <laughs> so we're, sub- we're subconsciously like working our ways to get back up into godhood or Ooh, some shit like that because i remember pirate guy he's like no the gods have never spoken to me and i'm, I'm an elected too so i mean that, that would explain why the gods never spoke to him yeah because they are the gods maybe i mean there's there's a few open-ended questions like with kane uh oasis's uh, yeah, other water dynasty. He was elected and he just kind of disappeared off to some place. So there's obviously quite a few elected outside the party. Or at least a few, right? Yeah. We can confirm. You're not so special. I kind of like that. I kind of like that, that there's other people other with people the same racing to same these same goals. Shit. Yeah, or like, I don't know. Ooh, imagine if these, some elected had the same vision as you and you're both trying to get to the get to the item of power. Ooh, Ooh, that'd be cool. That would be cool. If like a battle royale for it. Oh, that'd be neat. Yeah, it seems it seems interesting. It's an interesting. I didn't think I didn't think like uh, it was that engaging at first, but now I'm like, there's some really like strange questions and same mysteries to this brands thing. And I know it was just a device to just get a party to do something, and it worked, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it worked. worked. So <laughs> it worked. commend you for that. But now like it it turns into its own thing, and it's even, you know you don't even have to yeah. do it. Like plays itself. Yeah, pretty much. Once you have the idea down, you just have. Goals you have to get in between to get to the final and goal. And I think you solved, the, like, one of the major problems that we had at the start of the campaign, which was, like, <laughs> why the fuck would the party even, like, Stay travel together? together stay, like, yeah, because they all hate each other. I think, yeah, at the start, they all just tolerated each other for oh, some God. reason. The best and the worst sessions. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was good just, like, just, like, <laughs> learning the game and, you know... Six hour sessions and hey, uh, <laughs> those don't happen anymore. Those are forbidden. Those don't exist. What do you mean they're forbidden? When's the last time we had a six hour session, huh? Didn't we have one last week? We could have had one last week. <laughs> we <could have> one. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You're right. I don't know. Um Yeah, I it was on yeah, it was on purpose that to have a, a common goal to share with the rest of the world. Yeah, obviously. Between like the first twenty sessions it was just kind of you guys wandering yeah, from place to place. Yeah, it was pretty place. rough. It was pretty rough narratively. Like, the narrative took yeah. major, major L on that front. And there was just no... And it, and there was just, like... Main was, story, right? Yeah, like, I think... Because everyone... Like, even our characters weren't even fleshed out. I mean, Tokal... Like, he had, like, bare bones backstory. I assume he has more now. Yeah. Uh, Snow had this, like... Just like yeah, just random sense of urgency for his backstory, which kind of like fucked things up. Um, I think I think a couple times it kind of fucked things up. A little bit. I can um, recall me one or two times. Yeah, and it was just it was just frustrating. I'm just like, oh, if I act any other way, it doesn't make sense. But if I act this way, it breaks the game. It breaks right? the party. Yeah. So, so it's definitely a dilemma. But I think yeah, you fixed it, and now the party like just doze off on their own like we, we've got shit to do yeah. there's right? always something to do that advances the plot just one yeah. more step um pacing wise again i still think i'm fine with it um oh, okay i thought you were gonna say oh i mean it's 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 a little slow right no I, I don't have a problem with the pacing i just thought like maybe you'd have some criticisms about pacing no i mean <laughs> i'm not gonna criticize my own pacing how dare you it's perfect no um 
I'm fine. It's... Yeah. I hope we have some more media sessions. Yeah. I feel like we've had... Would you would you say this session is a meaty session? Had some meat to it? It had, a, it had more meat than last session, definitely. But it still was like... that. Was, it was a day. It was, it was a day in the morning. Yeah, everything happened... The last three sessions have happened in the same day. Within yeah. the span of like 12 hours. And then now we're like going into... Now we're like going into the this fight... Lady Sarias, oh man! And then we, then like a couple days after that, the, the heist. We're gonna do the heist. Yeah, are, are you guys worried that there's just so much shit to do that you can't really do what you want? That is, that is the exact conversation. Oh no, that's not the exact conversation. But it's it's the same principle when Snow sat the party down in the morning. That morning after the long rest, like we got so much shit to do, right? We have so much shit to do, and we have so many you know, loose threads that anyone could pull at any moment, right? And it's just like, oh, part is obviously taking way too much that they can <laughs> chew, right? They try to take a nibble and they took a bite. Yeah. A big bite. A big old bite. They try to eat the whole thing. It's... And yeah, it, it, in some regards, you could say, yes, um, party does have a bit too much yeah. to do. I think once we get past this heist it'll open up again it'll, i feel like it'll open up again there's not so much too much urgency there and i feel like sometime after that like i think you could have a decent time skip yeah in in huria where you just kind of wait for it to move for a while maybe you're just waiting for it to move to the next yeah place. like we need to get to like the what fourth stop from here yeah so you have it? like to eight months nine months yeah. ten months something so yeah that it would be good to put it somewhere around there i don't know how you would like because we haven't even moved from venture right now it's, it's been like two stays, weeks yeah it stays there for i think two, a month two months one month or two months i forgot the exact time but it stays there for a little while because it makes it makes it no because i think it was like there's six stops oh, so it's two months it's yeah. it's six stops it takes a month to get to a place and then oh. it stays there for a month so that's that's two months getting to like oh, two months in a yeah, section right, right 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 yeah something like that something like that it's that i think that's my major concern where there's just too much shit going on is that because i remember i remember asking this a while ago and you, and you were just like just pile it on just give me just give me all the shit now i'm just like am i giving too much there might be too much shit going on i mean this lady saria arc came out because maple wanted to play in the blood ring so technically that just all of that stuff that happened was kind of a party's choice. I mean, you guys also did it because Ryan found out that Lady Sara was a prime as well, and he was warned not to, not to, not to interact with her. Sure, uh, sure. Nostra, Nostra said, "Don't but do it." Ryan, Ryan, didn't, did I don't think he ever suggested he we go to the blood rink anytime soon. It's only when no. Maple, and Maple always wanted to go, and then he just fucking and he got, went. He got a good reason this time around. Yeah, figured out his sister was not around, or he possibly dead, possibly dead. So he's like, I need a vent. Let's go murder something in the in the blood rink, where the where the sand sucks up the blood and it changes. I don't know. Maybe, rain. Maybe you just monitor, monitor it, and if you feel like it's too much, yeah, and and get down. get some feedback. Maybe get it. So if you guys want to get into the discussion, get in the comments. Get, 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 in comments. get in the comments, get in the you comments. fucking fiends. Right? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Talk, talk about our podcast. Right? Talk yeah, about our yeah, campaign. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know yeah, what's up. About... <laughs> but yeah, this would be a good. <laughs> this would be a good talking point. Like, do you feel like there's too much going on? Do you on? feel like the it's yeah we're kind of getting bogged down in the tasks and stuff like that? Do you feel like our goals are being achieved? through these things yeah. we have a lot of goals too yeah. and we're often asking oh, what's, what's the main the goals what's the list? What, what are the, the subs list? what are the mains what are the sides like oh shit we have so much shit yeah, to do yeah that's one of my just not an issue but it's just something I'm a little worried about but if you guys are okay with it I'm okay with it you know yeah so, let me let me know let me know right Get now let me know right fucking, fucking now comments okay <laughs> like <Yeah>. comment subscribe <laughs> um I think that's all we have yeah. today right uh, the session ends right after that yeah, shorter session. Shorter session this week. Yeah. It wasn't, I mean, actually, that... it went until like 11.30. That was a normal, that was a normal session. I think it, it was like quarter past, quarter past. Quarter past what? 11. Yeah, so it and went then... longer than a normal session. 
No, a normal session we end at 12. Like, no, closer to 12. No, when's the last time we ended at 12? The, like, two sessions ago. We ended, like, 11.45, didn't we? Did we? I don't recall. Get in the comments, you think. Get in the comments. Yeah, Confirm it. Anyway, I think that's all we got for this week. Yeah, that should be it. We will uh, talk to you guys in the next part or the next sesh. Episode 15. Episode 15. Halfway to 30. Oh, hot. All right. Ciao. Bye. Thank you.